What is up, Conscious Monkeys? Welcome to another episode of Catch Up with Clayton. As always, I am your host, Clayton. On today's episode, we are going to get into, well, I think you already know, the past week of my life. And I am so excited to be back and doing this. I missed it. I had other stuff I was working on, as I told you last week, but we're back. We're going to dive into it. And the first thing on the agenda is Tub Club. I joined this ice bath club where they meet once a week. And by joined, I mean someone just invited me to a bunch of guys and girls that do ice baths once a week. And it turns out that they do it on Wednesday nights, which would be tonight because I'm recording it. But so when I record my last one, we did it that night. So you didn't get to hear about it. So I'll tell you about it. Super cool. It was kind of in like this neat, like little area. And when I showed up, there was a, like a barn, like a giant, like barn right beside the house. And I found it fascinating that this was located like downtown. I was not going to question it. I show up. It's like, it's like the house. Then there's like a little patio in between the house and the barn. And then in that patio was where we did the tubs. Where it got interesting is as I like walked in, the guy who invited me, he's like, oh yeah, you know, there's the house. This is like the lower floor of the barn. We got the tub set up right here. Bathrooms are in there. And then on the, like the top floor of the barn, we have a DMT room. And then over here we have, and I'm like, wait, <laughs> did you say you have a DMT room? <laughs> I was like, what does that mean? He's like, oh, dude, I'll show you. So we walk up like the stairs and we walk up more stairs. We're like in the top perch of this barn. And he's got like a TV. He's got a bed. He's got some, I think a guitar was up there. And he's like, this is where we do DMT. I was like, this is cool shit. I was like, this is where you do DMT. He's like, yeah. He's like, we could do something later if you want. And I was just like, I was like, maybe. I was like, I'm not feeling it right now. Maybe after the ice bath, we'll see how the night goes. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, long story short, did not do DMT, but maybe next time, maybe tonight. Who knows? Just kidding. Probably won't. I know my mom listens to this, so this will be an interesting conversation later. Um, <laughs> however, I did not, mom, so let's start there. Uh, but it was cool. So in the barn, we did some like deep breathing on the second floor. You know, that Wim, Ho Wim Hof method who where you just like deep, real, deep breathe real deep in your stomach and then breathe out quick. It's pretty cool. There's like 10 to 15 people there. We then randomly chose order of when we got to go in the ice bath. So that was cool. I was probably about number five on the list. And for my first time, I got 11 minutes and 11 seconds, which people said was a solid time. I have no idea. So yeah, I, I believe them. So yeah, they were telling me that the record was like 33 minutes. So part of me really wants to go for 44, 44, but not sure. Woke up this morning. It's pretty cold outside. Not sure if that makes it easier or harder to do ice baths, but we'll see. I'm excited. So that's cool. That's a new thing in my life. Did my first ice bath last week and planning to do my second one tonight. Let's see what happens. Excuse me for a sec. <coughs> Woo. Excuse me. Now you know what my sneeze sounds like. <laughs> this is an interesting thing. It's a little bit sad. It's more interesting in my opinion. So over the weekend, at the local amusement park called Kennywood, there was a shooting and two people got injured. No deaths. So that's good. And this would have been the night of Saturday, October 20 or September. That's October. Why did I write October in here? Uh, <laughs> of October 20 or September 24th. Jeez. Saturday, September 24th. So last Saturday. And kind of like knew about it and like, oh shit, like I've been wanting to go to Kennywood. So I was like, all right, well, I guess I got to wait a little bit because they're going to like put them park in maintenance and wait before reopening it. I was like, all right, I get it. So here's where things get weird though. On, it's probably yesterday or Monday, forget which day, probably Monday. I was reviewing my dream journal 
So if you don't know, I keep a dream journal where all the dreams that I have, I write it down on a piece of paper throughout, well, when I wake up in the morning. I wake up in the morning, I write down my dreams so that I can see patterns, I write down like intentions. It's a whole process. It's a whole process. And if you stick around, I'm going to be actually talking to a dream oracle. We already recorded the interview, but it's going to be releasing the first week of November, I believe. So stick around for that. But the point that I am trying to get to is that in reviewing my dream journal on Monday, I realized that the night of Thursday, the 22nd, two days before the shooting, I had two very, very interesting dreams. The first dream was me actually being at Kennywood. You know those like little gondolas that they don't actually have this at Kennywood, but there's like these little gondolas that'll like ride kind of around the park. They have them at Disney World for sure. You can think of the pterodactyl ride at Disney World where you kind of are just in that car and it's just like really high, kind of slow motion. So when I was at Kennywood, I was in one of those gondola car things. And as I'm going around the park, there's nobody there. It's empty. There's like this weird foggy mist. It's very dark. It's like during the day, but it has like this overcast mist fog vibe, kind of like a vibe you would see in like a zombie movie. And it was a very quick dream, right? So that happened and I kind of woke up, wrote it down went back to bed. The second dream that I had was really long and twit, like uh, twisted as in like went on different rabbit holes. The way that it ended was with a vampire covered in blood. And me reading this, I and mean, we can get down into it, but the way that I mentally interpreted this thing was that this was kind of a prophetic warning of vampires being at night covered in blood, meaning they attacked or caused harm to somebody. And then Kennywood with that gloomy feeling. So again, this would have been on Thursday, Thursday night. So then Friday morning, I would have woke up with this premonition. And then Saturday night was whenever the Kennywood shooting occurred. So those are the facts. My interpretation is that it was somewhat prophetic. Take it or leave it. I will leave that up to you. Here is where it gets very interesting in my opinion, right? If you want to talk about timelines, if you want to talk about entering different realities, here's where it gets interesting to me. I hope we all are aware of the butterfly effect or the ripple effect, right? The idea of doing one simple thing can change the outcome of reality. Think about this pen that I just picked up. If you're listening, then you don't know that I did, but just assume you, I picked up a pen. Now, had I not picked up that pen, it would be in a different location than where it is now. So what are the consequences down the road? Because of me picking up this pen, using it for demonstration points purposes, for using it to point at you. <laughs> what, what, is the, what is the ripple effect? Nobody knows, right? So where it becomes interesting is if I had gone to Kennywood the day before, if I'd seen that premonition and thought to myself, I need to go to Kennywood, would the shooting have ever happened? Because here's the way I view it is that I am vibrating, let's say at least at a frequency that's above murder. I'm not going to do it. I, I, I'm going to try to stay as humble as possible when I say this, but I believe that I am operating from love majority of the time of my life. Nobody's perfect. So if I was at Kennywood, it would have brought out that childlike nature of Clayton. If it brings that out and I am then communicating with people in that sphere, in that belief system, with that energy, with that energy, and I'm basically bringing the energy of love to Kennywood Park and creating this ripple amongst the people at Kennywood who I interact with. If I would have gone, if I would have spread that energy of love, the question becomes, would the shooting have ever happened?
And it's interesting because the easy answer is I don't know. That's the easy answer. What I believe is that it would have had an influence. The shooting may not have happened. But even with that being said, who's to say that the shooting would have not happened somewhere else? Maybe a different location. So what can be the takeaway from something like this? Well, in short, you can take this away. You can take away from this however you please and see fit. My main takeaway is partially to listen to what your intuition is. Listen to messages that the universe is giving you. And maybe this was something that I wasn't supposed to quote unquote stop or interfere with. And maybe this was honestly... This is what my personal interpretation is. Maybe this was just to show me the power that I have within my dreams. Because hopefully we all know, if you've listened to this podcast, that time is an illusion of the third dimension. So if time is an illusion based on this reality that we are experiencing right now, then that means that there is a realm outside of time in which past and the future are happening now. So if it's all happening now, that means we have access to the past and future at the same time, which is now. If that's the case, then we can see into the future now. So my main takeaway is I believe that this was to highlight to me, to show me, to ingrain in my head that my dreams do have the power of forecasting the future. And whenever I say this, I really hope it doesn't come across as me saying that I'm the only one with this ability. I truly believe we all have it. If you're listening to this podcast, if you have two ears, if you have, you don't even need ears. You just need to have a, I don't even know what it is in the brain. It's something in your brain that would be able to pick this up probably your pineal gland. If you have a pineal gland, <laughs> that's going to be the permanent, the, the precursor to this. If you have a pineal gland and a half functioning brain, you have the ability to do this. Now, I don't know where this is going to end up. This definitely feels like one of those initial like spurts of like a seed being planted that's going to evolve down the road. And frankly, I'm so glad that that's why I'm doing this catch up with Clayton. So I can be like, Hey, go check out that inner, that podcast I did whenever I talked about Kenny Wood and like the first time I had this prophetic vision occurring. That's my takeaway. You can take away whatever you want. That's my belief. All right, let's switch it up a little bit. Let's, let's end this on a positive note. So what is crazy? And I wonder if you're here from that, but my Instagram just went viral. Absolutely bonkers viral. At the time of recording, I am clicking around. If you hear clicks, click, click, click to check it out. I am up big (laughs) on the followers. So I started off last week, last time I was talking to you guys, 1,600 followers, 1,600 followers. And that's great. Like, that's pretty great, you know? And then, boom. Out of nowhere, out of nowhere, one of my videos, my reels went viral as fuck. Absolutely nutty viral. 1.7 million views, currently at 1.7 million views. That is obnoxious. I will tell you that. That is obnoxious. That is so many views. And if you were here before, I have a TikTok video where I had 2.1 million views. And this is just what this, that's the catalyst. So I figured it out, guys. I figured out the secret to going viral. Um, and I'm not saying it's perfect every time. Obviously, not all my videos go viral, but I have unlocked the codes to implementing a strategy that will create virality, which 
That's the plan, right? Create strategies, create strategies. Don't look for the one-off thing, create the strategies. So that's dope. That's dope. Uh, putting that out there. I didn't tell you what the follower count is up to, did I? So it went from 1,600 followers to a mere 37.5. 4,000 followers. It's like an increase of over 37x, 3,700%, something like that, at least, probably more. I'm not good with math like that on the spot. Whenever percentages get involved, it gets weird. So that was dope. Um, And let me give you some practical advice, right? Because maybe you're like, I don't really want to go viral on TikTok or Instagram. That's not my thing. And okay, totally cool. I get that for you. For me, that was my thing, and here's where we're at. I pulled it off. But there, here's what gets crazy, is I believe that I have figured out a way that you are able to get your desires in life based off of what I have implemented in order to make this happen for me. So here's what you're going to do. And this is your little, your little thing for staying so long into this podcast, so I appreciate it. So here's what you got to do. Here's what you should understand first, let's say. Let me back it up a little bit. The reason that you want something, the reason that I wanted to go viral on Instagram, the reason that I wanted to go viral on TikTok, the reason that I want to be able to interview anyone in the world, the reason that I want to be one of the biggest names in the world is because of the feeling that I believe I will achieve once I have it. Think about that. The only reason you want something is because of the feeling that you believe you will have once you get it. Where this gets interesting is what we were talking about earlier. Everything's happening right now, right in this moment. So if you are able, if everything's happening right in this moment, you are able to access every emotion on the emotional spectrum that exists in human, in human energy signatures. You have access to all of it, all of it whatsoever. There is not one emotion. There are no emotions that you do not have access to. So what does this mean? I'll tell you what this means. This means that you can feel it now. Now, how do you do this, right? Maybe you've never Maybe you're not sure how to get there, right? You're sitting, you're listening to this. Maybe you're anxious, you're nervous, you're feeling shame, guilt, fear, pain, all that kind of good stuff, bad stuff, good stuff. It's irrelevant. You're feeling that stuff. (laughs) How do you get to feeling in this place of your highest alignment, this highest achievement that you want to feel? Well, I think I figured it out and help of Tony Robbins. I saw this in a course of his. What you're going to do is jump up and down, get up out of your chair. If you're sitting, if you're laying down, get up, stand up. I want you to start jumping up and down and I'll even do this. I don't, I'm not going to do this because I have to, the microphone might make it difficult, but literally imagine yourself like the people who score a game winning touchdown, who hit the last buzzer beater of a basketball shot. The people who hit a walk off home run, you've seen them jump up and down, put their arms above their head and yell in excitement. Do that. Embody that. And maybe your goal isn't to hit a walk-off home run. Maybe your goal isn't to score a game-winning touchdown in the Super Bowl. Maybe your goal is to meet the love of your life. Maybe your goal is to make a million dollars. Maybe your goal falls somewhere else in between there. Maybe it's to go viral on Instagram. So what you're going to do is as you're jumping up and down, as your arms are above your head, as you're screaming, cheering for life itself, I want you to visualize that goal. Visualize yourself there doing it, whatever it is, whether it's checks rolling in the mail, I want you jumping up and down. See what you're doing with your arms, clap, cheer, fist pump, um, bang your chest. I'm telling you, all of these things will make it happen. Another good thing to think about, and Tony Robinson also pointed this out, is do you can also think about somebody you love or somebody who's your best friend who you haven't seen in a while, 
and imagine the smile on your face whenever you run into that person. Imagine how excited you'd be. Imagine how much love you would feel. Something to think about. With that being said, I really don't have much more for you guys. I think that's really highly helpful. I think that'll absolutely change your life. Oh, there's another piece of the puzzle. If you stuck around to this long, you're getting another piece of the puzzle. So let's do it. When should you do this? Great question. So here's what's happening. So your body, when it goes into these lower frequency states, you become stressed. You become tight and closed off. And I can kind of still feel my body doing it right now. So when you feel that tightness and that contraction starting to occur within your body, that is the optimal time to get up and jump around and do something of that nature because that'll loosen everything up. When you loosen everything up, you expand. When you expand, you align more with the frequency of love, the more natural order of the universe itself, and you become in alignment with that. So notice when you get tight, when you get tight, start jumping up and down and cheering like you accomplished everything that you already wanted to accomplish. And honestly, that's really all I've got for you. The only thing is, is if you have any questions, you can always shoot me a message or DM on Instagram, or you can wait until we see each other in the sixth dimension.